So hopefully you guys are following this. So that is makes it easy for you to use the concepts taught to work through any given problem. So this would be cheap reference two. So in terms of using PAT, so we can say applying PAT. So I is equal to I G G plus A I H I squared. Okay. So we're now going to calculate the I value for segment one. So I'm going to bring the segment here. So this is segment one. So working out I one. So I one is basically denotes the second moment of area for segment one. So that's essentially what, what that is. Okay, so we had the span of the flange to be 60 millimeters, and I believe it was 10 millimeters. So what do we need to know? So we know what the area is. So we've calculated the area to be 600 millimeters squared. We need to calculate for H2. So H2 will be the difference between the Y coordinates of the global to that of section one. So this would be Y bar minus Y one. Okay. Because we know this distance. So if we did subtract the distance, of y1 to y bar, so y bar is there, and we've got y bar to be 35 millimeters. The difference of the two will give us that. So we have 35 take away y1, which was 45, and that will give us uh, negative 10 or 10. And again, it doesn't really matter, okay, because when we substitute negative 10 into here, the negative sign will disappear. So we don't really need to matter. So it's just essentially 10 millimeters, okay. And we now need to calculate IgG. So IgG for shape one. And this is a rectangular section. So that will be B over d cubed over 12 for that particular section. Now we now need to identify what is B and what is D. So as I stated, the deforming load is at this position. So let's call that W. So since 60 is 90 degrees to the deforming load, this will characterize B. And since W, the deforming load, is in plane with this side, this will characterize D. Okay? Thus, 60 times 10 to the power of 3, or divided by 12. So all that we have to do is do our computation. So let's put that in this. So this would be 60 times into bracket 10 to the power 3 and we divide that by 12. So that would give us 5,000 and the unit is millimeters to the power of 4. 
Okay, so let's bear that in mind. Okay, so I think we've got all the little information to calculate I1. So therefore, the I value for segment or section one, so we're calling the I1, using the path equation W equal to, IgG is 5,000 plus the area, so we've got 600, this is what we previously calculated, so that'll be 600 times into bracket minus 10 squared. So all that we've got left is to do the need of computation, this would be plus into bracket 600 times 100. And that would give 65,000. So let's just double check. So yeah, that's fine. And that is fine. So hopefully we're all happy with that. So this gives 65,000, and that will be millimeters to the power of four. So that is the measure of resistance provided by the flange. Okay, so hopefully we're all clear on that. Okay, so I'm just going to call this uh, sheet three. And we're going to use the same methodology to calculate the I contribution of the web. So in terms of um, segment two, so segment two is like this. And it always helps to use diagrams. So the relationship of W to the dimensions. So here that was 40 and that was 10. We calculate the area for segment two. So that was 400 millimeters squared. Um, H2, so that will be Y bar minus Y2. So Y bar is 35 minus Y2 and Y2 is 20, which is equal to 15 millimeters. Okay, so we've got the area and we've got the distance to the new the global um, centroid against the segment centroid. So we can now calculate for I G G two, and that's equal to B D cubed over twelve because that is a rectangular profile. So let's define which side in the context of W is B and which side constitutes or characterizes D. So the side that is 90 degrees to the deforming load characterizes B. So that means B is 10 times D. So D will be the side that's in plane and parallel to W, which would be 40. And that will be cubed all over 12. Okay. So this will give us, so let's box these numbers up. 40 into bracket to the power of 3 times 10 divided by 12. And that gives 53,033. Point three three. If you want to do that, and that will be millimeters to the power of four. So we've calculated IgG. We know what a the area is, and we know what H two is. So we can now use um, the PAT formula. So applying PAT. 
I2 be equal to I GG2 plus area 2 into bracket H2 to the power 2. There we go. So all that all I have to do at this point is to box in our values and that should give us I2. So therefore, I2 is equal to IgG2. So that was 53,333.33 plus the area was calculated to be 400 times into bracket 15 squared. So this would give us 400 times 15 squared. So that is 90,000 plus 33, 1, 2, 3, 1, 3, 3. And that gives 143, 333.33 millimeters uh, to the power of 4. There we go. So now that we've calculated the I values for section 1 and section 2, the sum of the two will give us the total value of I for the composite form. So therefore, I value for T section or sectional B, if you want to call it that. So I T, that'll be equal to I1 plus I2. Okay, so let's get our values. So what was I1? So it's always important to double check that we've done the right thing. So 12 into 60, so 5,000. So I'm happy with that. 35 take away 45, that's negative 10. And 600 times 100, that was 60,000 uh, 60, plus 5,000. Yeah, okay, so we're good. Right, so I will encourage you to always make a point to just double check your values. So this will be equal to um, 65,000 plus 143.33 times 10 to the power 3. And all that we have to do is just box in the numbers, so 65,000 plus uh, 143.33 to the power of 3. And that will give us 208.330 millimeters to the power of 4. All right. Now, as a word of caution, when it comes to calculates in the value of i, you need to ensure that it's in meters, in the base of meters. So to do that, you need to divide your answer by a thousand to the power of four. Alternatively, you can ensure that you convert all your measurements into meters and you work in the basis of meters. So that would be my advice um, to you. So the next part, I'm going to convert. So i, t, we worked that out to be 208,333 uh, to the millimeters to the power of four. So we can also write it as 208.33 times 10 to the power of three millimeters to the four. So change it. from millimeters four to meter four, then what you have to do is you have to divide the result in millimeters 
by a thousand to the power of four. So if we do the need the computations, if we divide that into bracket a thousand to the power of four, then that gives 2.0833 times 10 to the power of minus seven meters to the four. And there we go. So we've calculated the value, the I value for the T section. And there we go. Okay, so hopefully um, the PAP formula shouldn't scare you that much. Okay, it's as easy as it come. The only thing that you just need to watch out for is um, reviewing your values to ensure that your values are correct. So check in, double check in, and you should be okay, including how you go about communicating your information. So in terms of the actual lecture, I've actually used um, a table similar to the table that I showed you uh, when we're talking about centroids, so that it makes it easy to track and audit um, your numbers leading to the final solution. Okay, so now that we've gotten what I believe is the more, the most complex part uh, for this lecture series, in terms of calculating the value of I, hopefully that is clear. But this is what we just did. So um, in terms of the global coordinate for the centroid, in terms of the T section being I, um, X bar, 30 millimeters, Y bar, 30 millimeters. And this is more or less the value that we got um, at the end, right? Shortly. So this part is more or less looking at the impact of changing the geometric profile of a given um, section. So here we've got a T section whereby the value of I is calculated to be 67,000 approximately. And these are more or less giving you some idea in terms of what happens if you decide to either increase um, the span of the flange or increase the web. What would be the variability in terms of the resilience due to distorting or changing or augmenting the cross-sectional profile? So in terms of the flange, you realize that by increasing the flange by 100%, you've got some um, increase in resilience to about um, 6%. However, it's not really giving you that much. So from a design perspective, it might not really make sense in widening the beam to give you that desired resilience. But by increasing the thickness, or particularly increasing the web, you increase the material condition in terms of what's implied to the deformed loan. So if you look at the values compared to an increase of 6% by increasing the flange, by increasing the thickness of the section, that's increased the resilience by 135%, and by increasing the flange, uh, the web, sorry, by 100%, that's increased the value of I to almost 660%. So as a designer, it gives you that context that if you increase the material va uh, variance in plane of the deforming load, that will increase the resistance to bending in comparison to if you increase the span of uh, the dimension that is normal or tr transverse to the deforming load. So this gives you at least places this, this in, in some context. So that's the reason why if you bend from the thicker section of a ruler, you've got a more resistance to when um, a ruler is more or less um, bending in its flat state. So there you go. Bye, bye, bye.